by the grace of our Lord. We are going to read from the book of Psalms, the Old Testament, the book of Psalms. Psalm, Psalm 84. Psalm 84. Old Testament, Psalm 84 and verse 1. How lovely is your tabernacle, O Lord of hosts! My soul longs, yes, even faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Even the sparrow has found a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young. Even your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God, blessed are those who dwell in your house. They will still praising, they will still be praising you, Sila. Praising you. Blessed is the man whose strength is in you, whose heart is set on pilgrimage. As they pass through the valley of Baca, they make it a spring. The rain also covered it with pools. They make it a spring. The rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Its one appears before God in Zion. O Lord of O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. O God, behold our shield and look upon the face of your anointed. For a day in your court on your court is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a son and sealed. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will be will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man who trusts in you. Amen. Blessed indeed to the whole to the full extent is the person who trusts upon the Lord. And indeed the word of God says that he is like a tree that is planted near the waters of the rivers, and it grows out its roots next to the, the river, and when the heat the scorching heat comes along and it will not be altered and it will always have good branches and it will have no issue in the times of need and it will never stop bringing forward fruit very blessed is the person that has set his hope on the Lord and only to the Lord of course there are at least two different ways for a person to be in this way blessed and hope upon the Lord one way is a difficult way that God is, affli is a, a, ha has to go through with a person an affliction so that this person can be made safe and secure and hope upon the Lord as the w word of God allows many sorrows not just ones not just one just many different sorrows and we know because God is confirming that this sorrow is working for patience and that patience is working towards testing and edification and that edification is working towards hope so that in with the way a difficult way and a way through afflictions the word of the person of God hopes upon the Lord because the love of God is uh, poured out into his heart therefore we know that this is the special kind of way the afflictious way through which God is working in our lives so that we can reach the point of blessings so that we may all be to the point of blessing, to the point that God wants us to be. And it is very important 
for us to hope upon the Lord and only to the Lord because all of our life is hope and based upon Him. The present, the past even, but especially the future. This is the difficult way that God sometimes uses so that He may edify us so that we can reach the point to hope to the Lord and only to Him. Of course, there are other ways as well. Not through the sorrows and afflictions and trials, but rather through the grace of God that is leading the person to hope upon the Lord with a way and a doctrine that is according to the Word of God. In other words, confirming us understanding that blessed is the person who hopes upon the Lord and because we know that God wants us to reach that place of a perfection, we, by the grace of God, accept and we select the grace of God instead of his wickedness, of his affliction rather, sorry, and we select truly what God says, that God is true. And he is a someone who's going to bring down reward to only, only, but only to those who seek him out. Therefore, God wants us to be from the people that are seeking him. And our hope to be set on the Lord and only him. And when he says, you shall seek and you shall find, because only he who seeks will find. The... It's much more secure and greater and also with boldness that we need to keep. Because the Word of God says that we should enter the tent of God with boldness. Therefore, we, in the Word of God and by the Word of God, we're going to take out and throw away, throw again out to the sea our nets so that we may fish with boldness so that we may fish the blessing of God through seeking out and reaching for the hope of God it's that simple God says to us that you need to ask petition and you shall receive so that your love may your joy may be full because he wants our joy and our blessing to be in full and he's giving us two ways of going about it. Do you want me through sorrow uh, for me to edify your life and that affliction to work so pa toward patience and that patience to work towards hope and that hope will not be undone? Or would you like to come to me? In other words, do you want me to come to you or would you like to come to me? And that's the secret. And we want to go ourselves to God through the Word of God and especially through our praying corner. Washed in the blood of God, of Christ, as we have been baptized in the Spirit and as we ask and seek, as we pray with the mind but also praying with the Spirit for God to transform our lives, our hearts, and our logic, the way that we walk to a person that hopes upon the Lord and only to the Lord. The question is, is he going to do it? The answer is yes, surely, because he's giving us the opportunity. And he says to us, that come to me, all those that are weary, that have no hope to the Lord. That is why you are weary and troubled and I will give you ease and if you learn from me and you imitate me and you become easy going and patient in heart then I will give rest to your heart because my cross is not heavy 
and my path is good. Therefore, we have two specific paths, and it is up to us to select one. And our blessing is going to be directed by the, our decisions. Because God says that I vowed to my own self, and it's not a person to lie. And it's not a question for us, is God, does God want, want to bless me, me and my household, or not? That's not a question. The answer is, for sure. Not only he wants, he vowed himself that I, as a blessing God, will bless you because you come to my place, to my house, and as a multiplying God, I will multiply you. And also, I'm going to give you such a blessing, more blessing, the more you hope on me. But the message that I it's a third category, and that is the there's a category of uh, the sorrow, there's the category of uh, petitioning, but there's also a, pe a category of a person that says that I'm s looking forward. that uh, even faints, my soul longs and even fades for the courts of the Lord. He loves dearly. He loves the courts of the Lord, the presence of God. My heart and my flesh are loving the courts of the Lord. He doesn't say, give me hope, that is good. But instead, that person, in verse 2, in front of God and in front of people, he confirms in the presence of God what he or she has in her heart or his heart. Perfect love for the courts of the Lord. For us, that is the love for the church. Because we don't have a court but, but now, but back then there was a court of the Lord. There was a tabernacle through in which sacrifices were made but now we have the church and the church of the living God is our brothers and our brothers it's not just this building but the brothers are the church and there's the person therefore that God needs with affliction to bring him to blessing there's the person that as he asks, is asking for God and for the discipline of God, God is bringing him to the, um, to the right path as he hopes of the Lord. And there's the special person because his heart is flooded with the love of God for the courts of the Lord. He is happy and he is worshipping God. He knows that it's just a small sparrow that found a home, as we read in verse 3. A small swallow, a nest for herself. Because he has revelation. And why does he have revelation? Because the love of God is poured out into his heart through the Spirit. And therefore... His heart is filled with the love of God from the love of the Father. And that is very important indeed. It's very important for your heart to be full in, from the love of God. And for us to understand how important that is. In Isaiah, as he prophesies, he says for Eli Eliakim, his servant, that he has selected so that he may take the position of king. He says that he will be a father to the ones in Jerusalem. That is why on his shoulders I'm going to give and place the, play, the key of David and only to him I'm going to give not just the key of David, but for him the, to have the ability to open up and for no one to um, to be able to shut down and shut down and no one to be able to open because he has fatherly love for his brothers, for the people 
of God in Jerusalem. A unique love, and I repeat, for the courts of the Lord, that someone had longs and even faints for the courts of the Lord, for the presence of God. I would dare say that please God make us like that. Why? Because now we are entering in a, in a way of a special kind of blessing because this person is blessed because he will always dwell in the house of God. And God is actually living in the place of his heart. But he, with the Lord, will live in that presence. In other words, the, he's going to come to the church. And he's going to know that the church is his house. And he's going to love his brothers. And he's also going to worship with all his heart. God. And not just and not just anyone, and his heart is special, and I'm going to say this again, God, please make us like that. Blessed, therefore, is that person, and it sees we see in verse five, blessed is the man whose strength is in you, and we have strength. Someone may be strong in his own self or his, uh, he thinks himself as being smart or he hopes on his possessions or he hopes in his job and he hopes uh, upon different things or maybe he's strong in his own achievements and even worse to in his own, I don't know, maybe his paycheck, his properties, but blessed is the person that has the, his strength upon the Lord. The absolute hope is to the Lord and only to Him we are giving out something that is amazing because the Word, the word of God says that my paths are not your paths and my ways are not your ways. But his ways and his path, the Lord's ways and paths, are directed and written in his heart. He's not looking around to find the proper path. He's not looking around to find the ideal way for, of God in his life. But rather God has encrypted in his heart the proper way and the proper direction. Do you understand what it means? By revelation and through grace, because of the mercy of God... Just because your heart longs and even faints for the courts of the Lord. For God to fill up your heart with His own paths and directions. So that you know what God wants. And for you to know where you need to go according to the path of God. No questions. No mistake. Everything is perfect now. And not just that. And when they pass, that is in verse 6, through the valley of Baca, that is the valley of sorrow, and absolutely we all need to go through the valley of sorrow and we all need to walk and th through sorrow reach eternal life. Through many sorrows we will reach eternal life. And he, that person himself, is going to go through the valley of sorrow. But, wherever his foot may settle upon, there's going to be blessing. And he's going to transform the valley of sorrow, the sorrow that is, into joy, into blessing. Is it, the God, God is going to do that for him. Every sorrow, every affliction that will come in his life, God is going to transform that into blessings. Is that that unbelievable? And I'm going to say this again, and may God act that in that way in our lives. 
and they make it a spring and the rain also covers it with pools living waters through sorrow there's going to be living waters and the rain also covers it with pools that valley of sorrow is going to be transformed the, when he enters it they go that is in verse for uh, verse 7 the way they're working it will be from them to go from strength to strength and from glory to glory each and every one of them appears before God in Zion it's not in the borders but rather in the middle in other words he is praying he's going up the mountain and I remember once God told me go up the mountain and I went to my house I said how am I supposed to do that because there I know that I'm going to be blessed and you're going to listen and I'm going to listen to his voice I'm going to I want to go up to the mountain but how how am I supposed to go up to that mountain nothing happened N next night I went ahead and I said Lord how am I supposed to go up to that mountain and all of a sudden like an elevator from God came down and it with power it took me up and I stood at the top of the mountain and about a minute and I said that this is not according to power strength but by the power of the Spirit I'm able to go up to the mountain and I was glad and joyful and when the prayer ended I blessed God but I said you didn't show me anything you said that uh, I need to go up to the mountain I'm gonna go up again and I went again the next day and now I went and said uh, that you got me up to the mountain but I didn't see anything and the elevator again got me up and I went to the top of the mountain and I saw a sky that was prepared to throw down and rain for the clouds were going moving forward and back and I th said to myself that there's gonna be great rain coming and another time again the Word of God told me that you need to go up to the mountain and I st started going up by walking I wasn't growing weary but I was still moving and I moved up and I was talking to myself how am I supposed to go and again I moved forward but then I wasn't reaching any end not that way he said the Lord but the other way around and two wings came back in my back in my back and they got me up to the mountain the power of God the power of the spear is the answer but to whom that power may be found the answer is to the person who loves and longs and feigns for the court of the Lord who is like a sparrow that has found a home like a swallow that found a nest for herself and her children and now they are secure to the person that truly loves the church l truly loves the court of the Lord in the Old Testament the church of God in the New Testament and they're gonna move from strength to strength and each one of them appears before God in Zion and now we continue on lo saying Lord God of hosts he my prayer make me like that if we may translate that to us today give ear God of Jacob make me like this O God behold our shield and look 
and that's the good and uh, perfect point. And look upon the face of your anointed. That person, therefore, is truly anointed from the Lord. Do you understand what it means for you to be anointed with a specific kind of uh, spirit? The result is so, so good. that God a day in your courts is better than a thousand I would rather be a book doorkeeper in the house of God than dwell in the tents of wickedness for the Lord God is a son and sealed do you understand what it means for someone to be a son do you understand what it means for God to illuminate in your life do you understand again and I repeat what does it mean for the son in your life to be God himself and there's no darkness in him there's only light illumination from God and also he's a shield he's your protection there's grace and glory given to you by the Lord And now the word of God is confirming. No good thing will be held with will be withheld from him. And I want us to pray so that God may do us and that, that make us that way. Amen.